invite you all to join in today and step up, stand up, and join in the worship and just start lifting our voices. Just start lifting your voices to the Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise you, God. We lift you high. We dance for you today. We will not be silent. We will not be silent. We praise you today. We praise your name. draw all men to yourself, Lord God. So, Father God, we just lift up your Son. We lift up the Holy One of Israel. We lift up Emmanuel, God with us, Yeshua, Hamashiach. We lift you up, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We exalt you, God. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Just lift your voices this morning. Oh, we worship you, God. We worship you, Lord Jesus.
stay up here at the front, that's all right. If you want to go back to your seat, that's okay. Amen. If you just need to go to the floor, that, that'll be good too. Amen. We're just going to worship. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh 
surrounds you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. My love is so intense toward you. Peace, my children, rest in that love, for it is eternal. It is with you. I will never, ever
see the Lord saying this morning, if you could only see what I see, if you could only hear what I hear, both in heaven and in the earth, out of every kindred, people, tongue, and tribe, 
lifting up the song of the Lamb, the song of the redeemed, even the song of my servant Moses. I'm hearing from every generation, out of every tribe, out of every age, the song of the Lamb, the song of the bride and the song of the bridegroom. And the Lord would say to you this day, even as I sit in eternity and I look into time, I will cause you to see what's happening in eternity. I will cause you to know what the Father is doing. I will cause you to hear the heavenly hosts. Even that great cloud of witnesses <laughs> that's encamped around about you. Oh, you shall know that their voices are lifted high too, says the Lord. For this is the hour of my priesthood. This is the hour of my holy nation. This is the hour of my chosen people, says the Lord. So put on your priestly garments. <laughs> put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Put off the sackcloth and put on the oil of joy. Oh, and put on the garments, the beautiful garments of praise. For I have adorned you, says the Lord, as my priest. I've anointed you as my people. I've declared you to be my royal ambassadors in the earth. And yea, I, your voice is heard in heaven. And your, earth, your voice is shaking the earth, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, Hallelujah. If you can only see what I see, if you can only hear what I hear, open your eyes and see. Open your ears and hear the sound of heaven, says the Lord.
on, the Lord was showing it to me as we were singing these last two songs. It's Ezekiel 122. And just close your eyes and, and just let the Lord unveil this in your, in your mind. It says, now stretch over the heads of the living being. There was something like an expanse, looking like the tremble and awesome shimmering of ice crystals. Under the expanse, their wings were stretched out straight one toward another. Every living being had two wings which covered its body on one side and on the other. As they moved, I also heard the sound of their wings like the sound of great rushing water, like the voice of the Almighty, the sound of tumult, like the noise of an army camp. Whenever they came to a stop, they lowered their wings, and there was a voice above the expanse that was over their heads. Whenever they stopped, they lowered their wings. Now the expanse that was over their heads, there was something resembling a throne. It appeared like it was made of sapphire. And seated on that which looked like a throne, high above was the figure of the appearance of a man. Now upward from that which appeared to be his waist, I saw something like glowing metal that looked like it was filled with fire all around it. And downward from that which appeared to be his waist, I saw something like a fire. And there was a brightness and a resemblance of remarkable radiance like a halo around him. As the appearance of the rainbow in the clouds in the rainy day, so was the appearance of the surrounding radiance. This was the appearance of the likeness of glory and brilliance of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell downward and I heard the one speaking. So Father, we just thank you that, that your rumble resounds within us. That we can hear the move of your spirit as we worship and praise and give thanksgiving to you. Father, I just thank you that your spirit is moving on us right now. That as we have entered into this throne room worship before your presence, that all of the dynamics of the throne room, the seraphim, the cherubim, the, the bowing down of worship and crying out, holy, holy, we have been uh, a part of that. And it has been an imprint on us that we will never forget. So, Father, thank you that you call us into that secret place and we're able to enter in with the, with the roaring of our voices, with the praise of our hearts, exalting you, giving you all the glory, Jesus. We honor, we love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. That was good worship this morning. Thank you, team, for uh, leading us through that. Uh, I gave each, you got a card when you came in? And on this card, everybody got a card. If you don't have a card, Wanda will give you one. Just raise your hand. On this card, I want us to write where we have had breakthrough with God, healing. Uh, just write on the card no matter how many there are. Somebody said, well, I've had 30 since, or 33 or something since I've known you. I said, well, just write as fast as you can. One word will do. Back, head, heel, you know, whatever. Because what the Lord was showing me this morning, hey, Noah, will you turn me down? Or will you turn me down just a little bit? There we go. What the Lord was showing me this morning is sometimes we live off today's manna and we forget that we've had manna all along. And this is going to be a season of not only receiving what the Lord has, but celebrating and remembering what he did for us and what he's done for us. And uh, I'd like for you to put your first name on it if you don't mind in case we have any more questions. But when you come up for offering, I'd like for you to have all your cards. So we're going to pray over them. Uh, we're going to talk about them a little bit this morning. I feel like God has a message of how testimony brings breakthrough for the next thing that he has for us. Amen? Okay, I'm going to turn over to Chuck. So fill out your cards. Thank you, Pastor C. Good morning, everybody. Y'all doing a good? After that great worship. I'd like to welcome any visitors we have today. Uh, if you've been given a uh, connection card, if you wouldn't mind completing that and giving it back to me after the service, I've got a gift for you to, to take with you. In the back of each seat pocket, there's also some, uh, on the other side of that connection card is a prayer card. If you have any specific prayers that you want to, our prayer team to pray for, uh, feel free to uh, write that out and put it in the offering or give it to uh, 
were one of our pastors. So uh, the uh, you know God does many many miracles, and we expect miracles every day. But on December the 13th, which is a Thursday, Thursday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. night. Uh, at seven o'clock, uh, we're going to have a miracle service. We're just going to uh, let him show up and and see what uh, what kind of miracles he can he can uh, let us do through him. So that's December thirteenth. Put that on your calendar. Uh, before we bring our tithes and our offerings forward, we have a time for while everybody's writing all their testimonies. We have time if anybody wants to take just a brief second while they're writing and just uh, give a testimony. I do. Um, I was going to say, you know, many of you have prayed for my niece for a long time. She went through a very difficult time, very troubled time, and um, she has uh, completed a year of sobriety. She has become uh, a, what do you call it, a coach for two other people who have gone through the same struggle. And they had a, a banquet last night to course raise money and then just celebrate all the testimonies of people that have had that breakthrough <coughs> and it was amazing just to see where she was two years ago and where she is now and um, I'm just so grateful to God, to God for that saving her really awesome. yeah. anybody else want to share a testimony I want to thank God for his financial faithfulness to Haiti in this year. When we started this last project, I virtually had no money, but I started it in faith. And up to this point, we have put in the foundation, we poured the foundation last week, and tomorrow we're going to begin putting up the concrete walls, a thousand concrete uh, blocks. And then hopefully after that, by Christmas, we'll be able to bless them with a present of a new home. So uh, we're just thanking God for that. Is uh, back on our mission to all, which Ruth uh, so graciously provided for us. Thank you, Ruth. Um, uh, Daniel's information is back there, Haiti Initiative, and there's a list of building materials that are available if you'd like to buy some concrete blocks or some two by fours, uh, as much or as little as you want to give. Uh, that's available, and uh, just give that to the gathering, and we'll make sure that Daniel gets that. So, a lot of the body. sleepy and and have a struggle every night I stop have a pill a sleepy pill and I become tired down and I stop praying they ask God you need to you need to help me and he tell me stop the caffeine and I took it off the caffeine like that and I sleep every night like a baby wow it's amazing another one is my body, I play volleyball twice a week, and I was almost give up in volleyball because my body was hurt, every every part of my my body. And they, I was, I become a very good friend at Bengui, 
And every time I come volleyball, I love penguin, I do penguin. And they said, I say, come oh, why penguin is my friend now? Why you not? He said, I can heal you. And I start praying about my healing, my body. And I start want to stop and go play volleyball because I have so much issue, angry, complaining. And I said, God, I don't want to do this anymore. He said, this is why I call you there, to be praying for these people in the volleyball. And to your example, they can know Jesus. And I said, wow, how I do? He said, just say them, you love them. And I start doing it. When they complain and make about my play, I miss up the ball. Everybody miss the ball. But when I miss the ball, everybody nag and they say, I love you, I love you. <laughs> and then my body completely healing. I don't have any pain, my joy. I told my husband this morning, my fingers moving, nothing hurts. It's God. He always, if you search him, you search medication or caffeine, or he can heal you completely, but you need to go to him. Go to the water. It's the raw water, the fresh water. He's the one he wants. And I'm thankful today. And thank you for this church to be praying for me and my marriage, my husband. And we still come back. This is miracle. <laughs> so, um, I don't even know how to, this is just really cool. There were a lot of um, dynamics of detailed things that were going to be happening this week in my life, and um, like I thought there had been this plan, you know, in place, and I had it all on my calendar, where I was going to be, what I was going to be doing, whose dogs I was going to be watching, all this stuff for months and months. And then all of a sudden, things started to change, and then things would drop away, and new things would come into place. But like this week, it was so cool just to see like God showing me how he had a specific place for me to be a perfect place, like what he had for me to do in each moment. And that it wasn't anything that I would have like, you know, thought up or planned for myself. And it seemed like as much as I was just like, I was just trusting him, he was like, let me see what I, you know, let me show you what I have right here. And there were so many amazing provisions that he had for me this week that just really kind of blew me away, where it was, I was just resting in him. You know, and just trusting. I know, like you know, I know I had so many options of places that I could, you know, go and things I could do, um, but he just had the perfect places for me at each moment, and it was just such a blessing. So last week we prayed for hormones healed, and I got a word reset. Our power went out in our condo, and. The 24 hours later, one of the gals staying with us hit the reset button in the bathroom and it turned the power back on. And I heard the <coughs> Lord say, pay attention, reset. And the last word Cindy got last Sunday was thyroid reset. Well, that was needed for me. So I went up and got prayer. And uh, this week I, I saw the hormones healed and thyroid got reset. I can feel the difference. So. Speak to the dry bones that they need. But then you go past that, and then what else did God say? Call the wind to bring breath. Just because those bones were put together, you had a body, but that body had no life. Speak uh, breath. we got to speak through situations. Right? That's the thing I've learned this week. Speak. You have the power. He spoke six days or seven days, six days, all this stuff. You have the same power Jesus gave it to you. Use it. Step into your situation. Scott's tumor markers are down 90%. Mm -hmm. I just ask that everybody uh, keep him in prayer because he is still continuing with chemo. He did have a chemo treatment Friday and um, he had a little bit of side effects from it Friday night, but much better than the last time. And we're just praying that those tumor markers get to zero. Amen. Amen. Woo!
gifts and offerings. Uh, before we do that, you know, uh, if you don't plant a seed, nothing grows. So today we're going to plant seeds, and we're going to make these seeds grow. But we're going to do that by saying a declaration over our offering. So if you would stand with me, we're going to say this declaration and watch things happen, because when we declare it, God answers prayers. Here we go. Lord, as we give back to you today, we're trusting for our nation to be transformed to reflect your Lord. Poverty to be destroyed in our lives, community, and our society. There be no needy among us. Our city to be a place of justice and abundance. Favor on our businesses to create jobs. A platform to influence economic systems. Blessings, creativity, and the ability to create wealth. An army of lovers released to bring in the harvest. Wholeness, holiness, health, and prosperity. Your glory and presence resting on us. We love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father, for these gifts and offerings. May you use what is offered today to bless this community, change the culture around us to reflect your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Offering buckets are up front. Feel free to bring your offering forward. You know, the Lord told me that we are good seeds. You know, Chuck talks about, Chuck was talking about seeds to grow, but uh, a while back I was reading, you know, the parable of the seeds. How some seeds are eaten up by uh, the birds, some people dry in the heat. And the Lord was saying to me, you know, my people are good seeds. Amen. You know, I plant in them when they receive Christ, and they grow well for me. And I prune and help them to be nourished and fed. And my people are good seeds for me. So just know you're a good seed. Amen. That sounds like some kind of TV show, doesn't it? This morning we're going to talk about risk. And um, how many love to take a risk? You know, some people are big risk takers. Let me see those hands. My husband, yeah, yeah, yeah. I recognize you guys. I recognize you guys. Some people are kind of medium. I'm going to be the medium. And some people are risk adverse. And I know there's a few few in here too. Nobody's going to raise their hand for that one, right? But we know who you are. <laughs> we know who we are, right? You know, it's funny because within a family, you'll see that some people are very uh, cautious and, and very methodical in the, the way they think through things and the process and deciding. Some people are, you know, very like, I thought it, let's do it, and we'll see what happens. And a lot of times in a marriage, it's nice to have that balance. Right, honey? He's my risk taker. He's the one that just goes all the way. He'll be like, that's a good idea, let's do it. And I'm like, hmm. I'm a little less uh, risk, uh, risk taking. But I want to talk about risk because I feel like we're in a season of big risk. And you know, big risk at big rewards. And even in the, when Jesus talked about the talents, you know, the one who had the ten talents risked big. And God is looking for people who will risk big. And it doesn't have to do with your personality or whether you're risk at first or risk, uh, what would you call that, forward maybe? People who just go for it. It doesn't really have to do with your personality. It really has to do with your yes. It has to do with your yes to him. And we, you know, God made us how we are. And he continually transforms us into his image. But he doesn't get rid of our personality or our blue eyes or whatever those characteristics are he gave us. He just makes what he's given us to look more like him. So when we think about risk, it really has to do with our yes to him. 
and we all have said yes to him or we wouldn't be sitting here. But is that yes a instant yes? Or is it a yes, let me think about it? Or is it a yes, but that's really just uh, in conversation, it's not in action. And God is looking for people whose yes is big and it's scary and it's gonna take some courage and it's gonna take some people around us that say, go, I'll stand with you, you go, I'll stand with you. He's looking for that. <clears throat> And when I was thinking about this, I told, I was telling somebody, I really need a good acronym for risk. And the thing that I kept thinking of was risk. Ready, in spirit, know how. Our yes is that we're ready to God, right? When we say yes, that means that we're ready, God. But we have to be in his spirit, in spirit, in order to be able to be ready. Because we can't be ready without his Holy Spirit prepping us, right? And we trust that his Spirit gives us the know-how to be able to take the risk. So we're ready, in spirit, know-how. That's what risk is. Our yes is yes, our feet are steady, and our actions are forward. That's what God has called us to do. And I think this is part of this whole 2019 season that we're moving into is uh, God is raising up people that are just going to go for it. And we're not going to always understand what it looks like. We're not going to always have the full plan. How many of you have not had the full plan, but you did it anyhow? We all have. You know, when we said yes to Jesus, all we knew was yes meant eternity and everything in between was up for grabs. I mean, seriously, when you think about it, we know what the end is, but we don't always know what tomorrow <laughs> looks like. And part of this whole season is being able to have that yes every single day. Amen. And that yes every single day in spite of how we feel about it, mm -hmm. the nervousness of it, how we have tried to figure it out. I was telling the worship team this morning, the team as we were praying, I said, you know, I've worked on this message for three days. God's just like, let it go. Just shake it off. You've prepped. You've, you've got something to say, but it's not going to be exactly the way you want it to come out. And um, how many know that that makes you nervous? Because, because you know, you, you're trying to assimilate. It's like these cards. You're trying to assimilate an order, but really what you have is a lot of information but you don't quite have which one's one and which one's 10. And which one's four, which one's five. You just know that God has information that he wants to get out there. He has an anointing that he wants to release. And we don't already always know exactly what that looks like. And it creates this, um, this call from God for us to step out of our comfort zone, step out of our bullet points, our PowerPoints, some people can relate to that. Our bullet points, our PowerPoints, our one, two, three, our, our uh, you know, our uh, need to have clear process. Not that clear process is not important. I understand business people, I, I, life people, you know, process is important. But sometimes God wants to dump our process on the ground and have all those cards just laying there, and then he'll say, I want you to pick that one up, and we'll do this. And you're like, well, God, let me just help you, because I really think this other card should go first. And he's like, I know you do. That's the reason I had you throw them all on the floor. Because I want a flow that will go the way my spirit's going. And it's going to cause you to be uncomfortable. It's going to cause you to have to let go of the thinking, not wisdom, but of, of the thinking process and allow the Holy Spirit to reorder in the way that God has it. This morning as they were practicing for worship, I could feel the Spirit move on the songs. And then there was one song that I felt like it needs to be back to back with another song. And then we ended up get rid of one of the songs because for some reason once we put those songs together
that fifth song didn't fit. Now, if we were people of uh, non-flexibility, we would have said, you know, Pastor Cindy, I can't get rid of that song, and I'm not going to read it on order. But because we're so spirit-driven, so flexible, they were like, sure, and Jesus, we need to throw that other song out. And I was like, yeah. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to have that flexibility in the spirit to be able to move forward in the natural. It takes both, you know, us being ready and, and willing to go. Um, because we know that when we take that risk and we have that breakthrough, it provides a breakthrough for everyone around us. When one breaks through, we all break through. When, when there's one healing, there's all healing. And we'll see more and more healing. I do believe that. I love seeing all these. Um, Greg has a database and he's going to put these in our database. He's smiling because he's like, I didn't realize that's what we were doing today. But, uh, but, <laughs> but you know, that's part of it. It's just, it's just realizing. Uh, I'm going to read some of these so just so we can press into them. So, um, breakthrough uh, through burnout and restoration and purpose. Healing from physically being fatigued and bronchitis. Uh, protection from a car accident. Healing, had a broken arm and in a prayer meeting it was instantly healed. Back pain healed. Sleeping at night. Some of them I can't quite read that well. Um, liver healed. Delivered from alcoholism, mental illness gone, trauma healed, arthritis in almost every joint healed. Knee pain healed. No more migraines gone. So a lot, and those are just like one or two off of a card. And just think of all the things that God has done in that. And, and I think that's part of uh, a secondary uh, call for us is not only to be willing to take risk, but, you know, we risk out of the testimony where we've had success. So we can look back when God's calling us to do something that's out of our zone, that might push us beyond where we should be, then we can go back and tap into what we've done before in order to build us up for what he's going to do with us now. Uh, one of the scriptures we're going to look at, we're going to go through Mark a little bit, but first I want to look at Hebrews 11.11. 11. And I was going to share that last week, but it kind of got a little bit out of control last week. Did anybody notice it got a little out of control last week? Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. It was out of our control. It was all of God's control. But Hebrews 11, 11 says, By faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive a child, even when she was long past the normal age for it, because she considered him who had given her the promise to be reliable and true to his word. Him who calls you is faithful. And him who's going to move us into this place of high risk is going to make sure that when we move, we are we have the ability, or the word for this actually means power. Sarah had the power to conceive. And over the last couple mornings, the Lord has been giving me visions about power and about how he has released power within us. We have the power and authority. We have the, the power, the dunamis power, to be able to break through, to release healing, to have financial breakthrough, all those different things. We also have the uh, authority to be able to command and to do the things that he's called us to do. Say, yes, I have the power and authority. Amen. And sometimes we forget because we don't remember where we've already used that power and authority. So we forget that we have it. And we're asking the Lord, give us the power and authority. And he's like, okay, I'm going to 
show you that I have given it to you already. You have it. Now you might need it. You might want to ask for an increase, or or just a, 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 a manifested display of it. But we already have what we need in order to accomplish what He's calling us to do. We have what we need because He's given it to us. We're going to go through Mark a little bit, and I just want to talk about the different things that Jesus did, which you could do also. That sounds like an infomercial, doesn't it? Mark 1, 24. Because this is a season of miracles and breakthrough. And when Chuck was talking about our miracle service, it's not just physical uh, healing miracles. It's financial miracles. It's uh, I wanted to pray this morning for the people who are traveling and encountering family that they don't, don't normally encounter. We've got some that have already left. Because I believe that God is going to do some reconciliations in our family. Amen. I believe that Amen. where there are people who are lost, you know, sometimes when we go all, you know, all the holiday movies, when they when it has to do with families, it's all about how bad it's going to be, right? Mm -hmm. We watched something last night, and it was these two brothers that were fighting the, through the whole show because they just had that contentiousness between each other. It was competitiveness, it was jealousy, it was all those different things. It was misperceptions, hurts, all those different things that we don't understand. So let's just agree together that when we get together with our families, that that will be broken off. So we declare now, Lord, that all contentiousness, all jealousy, all misunderstandings, all brokenness between our family will be restored. God, we're just declaring now that our family that doesn't know you will have their heart first open for you yes. and that we will not be a point of soreness we will be a release of healing yes. you've given us the power to release yes. the wonder of you in the room yes. so Lord as we come into the room of our families as they come into our house as we travel across the country Lord we release peace we release healing. We release your shalom. And for every brokenness in every family member, we just call forth reconciliation in the name of Jesus. That there'll just be a willingness to bring an end to division and a newness in a family. So we just agree with that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yeah, we really want that. We've had a lot of uh, families. We've had two specific families that have been reconciled to their children, one of them after 18 years. And it was during the holiday time and it was just a suddenly. Um, so we've had a couple of reconciliations like that. And it's not like one called the other and said, oh, I'm so sorry. It was just something about the barrier between them mm -hmm. fell to the ground mm -hmm. and peace was released. And they didn't go back and rehash all the things that had been done to them, through them, for them, you know, firstborn, lastborn, middle child. They didn't do all that. Mm -hmm. There was just this suddenly of God that released uh, a heart of reconciliation yes. that brought two children in this one family after 18, and I don't know how many of the other years, but it was quite a long number, back as a family. It was the suddenly of God, and that really is a miracle. So that's what we're trusting. So Mark 1, 24 and 25. We'll start in 23. It says, just then there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out terribly from the depths of his throat, saying, what business do you have with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And I want to talk about this before I read Jesus' reply. You know, the demons recognize Jesus. The demons recognize Jesus. And they recognize Jesus in you. Have you ever been somewhere and all of a sudden somebody becomes very aggressive towards you? And you're thinking, what's wrong? I'm just trying to get a cup of coffee. That's, that's all I want. I just want a cup of coffee. And you don't realize that God is 
lighting up in you in such a way that that demon is on fire. So, so what is our response to that? Jesus responded by saying, uh, be quiet, muzzled in silence, and come out of him. Now, how many feel like they're up to doing deliverance in the grocery store? We got a few. Anybody want to take them shopping with you? Because you know what? If they're up to it, then they'll attract it, right? You know that when God's giving you anointing for something, then you attract it. When God gives you anointing for healing, then everyone you see that is not healed, your heart just goes out and you just want to pray and release healing over them. If God's giving you an anointing for deliver deliverance, then everyone you see that has a demon manifesting on them, your fire rolls up and you're just ready to do the deliverance. And it's not always a screaming match like we uh, sometimes see it. Usually it's just that quiet release of the presence of God. It doesn't say Jesus screamed at him, jumped up and down, spoke in tongues 15 times, 15 minutes, you know, spun around. It just says Jesus rebuked him and said, be quiet and come out of him. The simplicity of the authority and power we carry. And we carry the same authority and power through the Holy Spirit to be able to release that person of the demonic oppression. Amen? Amen. So I'm preparing you guys, because you know if you hear it, then there's a level, the Bible says that we're responsible for what we know. I can see a couple people are like, I might need to leave now. But it is true, if we don't know then how can we respond? But if we know and we're equipped and we have all these cards of healing and deliverance, then we're responsible to respond to the ones that God puts in front of us. And what does that response look like? It depends on what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. For some, you might just release peace over that demonic. They may not be ready to let go of their demon or the they may, they may like their demon. But Jesus gives us that ability to discern because we're ready in the spirit with the know-how to do what he's called us to do. And it definitely is a risk. Let's look at 30 and 31. Mark 1. It says, Now Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever, and immediately... They told him about her, Jesus. Jesus went to her and taking her by the hand, raised her up and the fever left her and she began to serve them as her guest. Now just think about that in our terms. You know, if you've been to someone's house and they're not feeling real well and there's, you know, there's a lot of activity around. Think of that, just taking the extension of your hand and when your hand meets theirs, the healing power of Jesus is released through you. And they're able to get up and make dinner like they were supposed to do, right? But that's exactly what happened. She got up and she was able to serve them while they were there, just by the extension of a hand. How, does it, how do your hands feel? Are they ready to go out and extend? Even just think about walking through the grocery store. Have you ever, you know, just reached up and put your hand on someone? Either say, excuse me, you're in my way. Or, um, hi, how are you doing? The power of God releases through you every time there is a touch to touch. We have the power of God to, to be released from us. Let's look at Mark 3, 9 through 11. It says, and he told his disciples to have a small boat, a, a small boat stand ready for him because of many people, so that they would not crowd him. That's so funny. Jesus is healing everybody, and he's like, I don't want them to crowd me. For he healed many 
And as a result, all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and screamed out, You are the Son of God. Think about that. Think about the people you bump into in the store. Or that as you're, you know, going through a place that you actually you accidentally run into them or knock into them. Think about preparing yourself every morning to be ready to release. You know, I'm filled up. I've got the Holy Spirit in me. I've got the power and I've got the authority to do it. So God, just let me run all into people. Let them feel the transference of you in me to them. Let them have a tangible touch of you through me. Through the random acts, through the accidental bumps, through the excuse me, let me get the lettuce. Let them have that transferable touch from me to you, to them. You know what I keep seeing? I keep seeing us as, um, um, I can't even think of the superhero character, but where, you know, the light comes out of their hands. Iron Man. And that's what, yeah, Iron Man, and then he has the shield. That's what we are. We have the light of Christ coming out of us. And part of it is just being aware of the power and the authority that we carry. Because Jesus said to us, even in Mark 16, he says that, I'm just going to read it real quick. You, you don't have to turn there. But even in Mark 16, we're going to try this out in a minute. So get ready. It says, uh, 16, 15, it says, And then he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed in me and has been baptized will be saved. But he who has not believed will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. Okay, I want everyone who believes to stand up. And everyone who doesn't believe, we're going to get saved today. Okay, I want you to send your hands out. Okay, these signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will get well. Amen. So I want you to raise your hand up if you're sick. Okay? I want those people with their hands raised, everybody turn around and look. Everyone with your right hands raised, I want you to go lay hands on them, because the word says that these signs will follow those who believe. If you can try something out and see if it's better, that'd be great if you can. I know Chuck's going to dance for us. We're going to have uh, some worship dance in just a minute. If you feel like it's better, I want you to raise your hand. If it's 50% better, got to get people to quit talking to us. If, if it's not better, I want you to raise your hand. We're going to pray again. If it's not completely healed. Okay, let's pray again.
So is it, is, does any have it better? Yeah. Yeah. You have better? Anybody completely healed? has to leave now in the name of Jesus and go to the foot of the cross. You cannot stay here. All spirits of trauma have to leave. As infirmity have to leave. In Jesus' name. If you had some difference, I want you to come up. So I had a um, over the past month just kind of flu-like symptoms off and on, just extreme exhaustion. It's like buckhorn. Mm -hmm. And then the headache was still there, so she prayed again. And then I think she was like, Terry uh, joined her in prayer. The headache was still there. I said, It's still there. I put her hands on my head, and the headache was gone. Amen. Um, my shoulder is bothering me. So, Lord, we just thank you for that tiny, tiny bit that's leaving now in Jesus' name. And that you just, uh, just the complete work. You, your word says that you finished the work that you started. So, God, thank you for the complete work in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, feels good. That's right. Amen. I came in this morning with extreme stiffness in my back and top of my legs. Uh, my sister laid hands upon me, my two sisters, and uh, it's all gone. Woo! Just gonna pray over you, and we're just gonna release. When when the demonic leaves, we 
just want to refill them with the, with the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, we just speak to the neck and just say, uh, it's done. you got to be healed now. Uh, we just release a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit everywhere the spirit of trauma was. I'm going to need somebody. Everywhere the spirit of trauma was uh, uh, is filled with a fresh new outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay to sing after a minute. <laughs> Double duty. No. <laughs> okay. I always say it's hard to catch and pray at the same time. <laughs> you know, because you're like, burp, 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 whoops. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, okay. So my back of the leg was hurting after a seven mile hike yesterday. So that's starting to feel better. And skin rash thing going on. Um, Michelle says it's looking better. That's good. That's good. So that's awesome. Let's give God a big hand for all the people. And there's going to be more. I mean, the, I, I know it. God has shown me there's going to be more. If we really thought about all the healing that we've actually had in our bodies, uh, we, would, we could write a whole book on it. So there's going to be more. There's going to be more release. Go with expectation. And don't even hesitate to ask your whoever beside you to pray for you again and again. Because we will not relent until we get it all. We will not relent until we get all of what God promises us. We will not let up until we get all. And we understand that God, God uses doctors too. We understand. But, but our desire is to be completely whole without meds. That's my desire. Now, there are times that we use them, and they work well. And we thank God that for all these discoveries and inventions. But our desire is to be completely whole. Amen. Completely whole. Amen. I want to talk about one other thing, and, and then I'll be done. But Because I think this is important to understand in this risk. And we're going to go to more of a little bit prophetic instead of uh, you know, reading different verses out of the scripture. The Lord has been talking to me about this risk. And what he's been showing me is... It's a season where there's going to be some sifting going on. And the sifting is, is he is looking for the true yeses. Amen. Because the true yeses are going to bring the breakthrough that the maybes are not going to be able to carry. And we understand that Jesus, even in, when he ministered in certain places, not everybody was allowed to go with him. When he ministered to Jairus' daughter, who had died, everybody was kicked out of the room except for James, John, and Peter. Even Peter's brother couldn't come with them because they weren't in the place where Jesus could use them in that arena. He needed the full yes. He needed those ones that were, were committed Head over heel, regardless. You know, when we read about, uh, and you can read this later, but in John, remember in John where Jesus had fed thousands and he'd done all these things, he'd healed all the people. Then he starts talking about, well, uh, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they could not understand what he was saying. The disciples couldn't understand what he was saying. What, they, what he was saying. And everybody began to disperse. No one stayed around. And Peter and, and Jesus says, do you want to leave? And Peter said, where would I go? I have seen too much to be able to leave now. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for hearts that have seen too much to be able uh, to stay with him, even though we don't understand. And that's where the greatest breakthrough we're going to see is when our yes is so sold out and devoted to him that he can use us even if we don't understand. He can use us. We'll be able to be put in the most difficult places. A young man's daughter who's dead. That's a difficult place to be in, right? But we will be able to be put in such difficult places of shifting our nation, of raising the dead, of releasing miracles, of, of casting out demons, we'll be able to put in the most difficult places because our yes is solid, even though we don't understand. And that doesn't mean our heart doesn't tremble. 
And that doesn't mean that there isn't a few things that buzz through our head going, like Peter, like Peter said, what is this? We don't really understand what you're saying, Jesus. It doesn't mean that, that there's not a little bit of conversation or struggle within us. But what it means is even with the conversation, even with the struggle, it doesn't matter. Our yes is yes. It doesn't matter because we are going all the way. And it doesn't matter what it looks like, whether I'm going to be in a room with a bunch of dead people that Jesus wants to raise from the dead, or I'm going to be in a room where everybody needs deliverance. It's not my favorite. I usually call Karen. But, where, <laughs> but you know, it doesn't matter. Our yes has got to be our yes. And it's got to be solid. It's got to be beyond our ability to understand because we know that revelation comes in our yes. Revelation comes in our obedience. And sometimes that revelation doesn't come until we are standing right there and then suddenly you're like, yep, that's what I need to do. And it may even not be with that much confidence. It could be suddenly you think, well, maybe if I could do this. But our yes is our yes and our yes is sold out. And that's what's going to bring this revival breakthrough for us is because our yes is solid and because God has given us the Peters, the Johns, and the James to surround us. He's given us each other that says, you know, I'm just going to stand with you in this yes. Because first of all, I don't know what else to do. Second of all, I trust who's leading us with such emphatic faith that I'm just going to go for it with you. Think about, I think Gene talked about it the other day, a couple weeks ago, about the, the guys who lowered his friend from the roof the uh, paralytic through the roof because they had such emphatic persistence. They would not be turned around. They didn't care. They had to cut the hole in the roof. They didn't say, I wonder whose house this is. I wonder if they'll mind. I wonder if I need to ask permission. No, they just said, we're going to get my friend healed. It's going to take all of us to do it. We're going to cut open the roof and we're going through. Because we believe in the one who's leading us. Regardless what it looks like around us, we believe in the Holy Spirit who's leading us to do what Jesus has called us to do. We believe with such perseverance and, and uh, um, bonding with one another in what Jesus has called us to do that we don't care what it looks like. And we don't care whether we understand it or not. We just know that we're supposed to step and we're going to step regardless of what we know. We're going to step because of who we know. And because God has put a few strong people around us to step with us. Because God doesn't call us to step alone. He calls us to step as a body. And so this is a season to step. Step big. Grab a hold of the person next to you and say, we're stepping big. We're not going to resist. We're not going to talk ourselves out of it. We're not going to rational, rationalize the call away. We're going to step big, and we're going to step in, and we're going to be foolish for God, and we don't care what it looks like, because we're going to be that breakthrough anointing Amen. that God needs Amen. for this revival season. Amen. 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 So I'm going to ask you guys to stand. I just want to pray over us. Thank you for all these testimonies. And if you have more, just keep writing them down because we want to keep up with all of this. We want to make sure that God gets the credit and the uh, uh, reward through our testimonies. And our whole wall in there is all testimonies. And we're, after Greg catalogs, he'll put them up there. But what I want us to do is I want us to really grab a hold of the people beside you. And, and let's, let's just declare together that we are a people of yes. Now, let me just say this. If you don't want to be a person of yes, really, it is okay. It, it really is okay because we know that we can't make anybody do something they don't want to do. Has anybody tried? Is anybody married? Right? We understand that we can't make someone be something we want them to be. We trust God for them. So, uh, but we're just going to step into this yes. And Father, right now, we are holding hands. We are declaring our yes to you. God, we are declaring that you have surrounded us with strong yes people. That regardless of the circumstances, regardless of 
what obstacles we may perceive in the natural or just in our minds that we're going to take the risk because we are ready we are filled with the holy spirit and we have the know-how to do it we know how and we know how because you're going to tell us how that's how we know Amen. you know it's not rocket science it's just not always what we understand so father we just say yes to you we, we declare you as the holy god we declare you as sovereign, that you're the one who has a plan, and we're excited that we are a good seed, that we can grow to be a part of this magnificent plan. God, we just declare revival over our region, over our nation. We just declare that our country will become on their knees, people after God, and will just be a, 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 a lighthouse for the other countries to see. We declare a, 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 a wave of healing and, and miracles throughout our country where the sick are made well. Even in our declaration, we say that the uh, Alzheimer units are emptied because we have the mind of Christ. So we just declare uh, clear minds. We declare a reverse of all damage that's done. God, we just declare that instead of brother fighting brother and politician fighting politician we're going to declare your best will be released over our nation we we declare that we will be those people of god that everybody wants to be we will make the other nations jealous for our relationship with you so use us god use us as those risk takers those history makers those people that will break through whatever wall is in front of us, that you've given us the, the C4 to just blow it up, God. And as we go through, we will all be able to bring people with us. Mm -hmm. So for our families, for our nation, for our yes. community, God, we just say yes to you. Use us today as we walk out the door, whether we go to a restaurant or a grocery store, whether our family calls, whoever, use us today to be the releasing power and authority of your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. So have an amazing Thanksgiving. Our prayer team's up here to pray for you. And I know it's going to be a good year, right? Amen. I want to hear testimonies about families restored. <laughs>